Department in Annapolis, Maryland. He is a professor, professor of information technology and analytics at American University in Washington, DC. He operates both sail and power boats and is studying for a Coast Guard 15, uh, 25 ton master's license. Skipper, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, I am delighted to be here and I'm really appreciative of the invitation. And for everybody, uh, I will speak a little bit from a different perspective. Um, I know most of the presentations you've seen so far have been from uh, Coast Guard or Coast Guard Auxiliaries. And I'm more on the pleasure boating side. I'm a yachtsman uh, and our yacht club, uh, Seafarers Yacht Club in Annapolis really promotes boating safety and seamanship uh, for pleasure boating. And so I'm really, really happy to be able to uh, participate from that perspective and to help share some of the joy and the fun that comes from uh, making electronic passages. Next slide, please. So there are four things that I wanna highlight and then two others that I'd like to give us a little hands-on time. So the first is I wanna talk about marine navigation. Uh, I'll also talk about charts and maps and help everybody understand the differences between the two and how they both uh, play a role in our electronic passage making. I'll talk a little bit about ATONs, uh, aids to navigation, and then some of the chart plotters that are possible, um, including some of the free and open source chart plotters that you can use. And then I'll get into some fun and talk about how do you plot a course and um, some of the plans for booking slips and, and things like that that make electronic passage making uh, a lot more fun. And I will say on the bottom uh, right hand side there, that photo is uh, of a sailing vessel Transcend which is one of our primary training vessels. It's my personal vessel, but it's located there on Back Creek in Annapolis. And it's uh, so much fun to see our Sea Scouts uh, getting training on that particular vessel. Next slide, please. So for me, I've come up with a little uh, way to think about marine navigation. Uh, and I talk about it as the art and science of getting from where you are to where you want to be in a boat. And the reason we talk about it this way is that there's definitely a science to it. So you'll learn about GPS and uh, uh, weather prediction and the science that comes uh, from all of the navigational tools that we use. But there's also an art. Uh, and for those of us who are on the pleasure boating side, uh, we're in boating to have fun. So we want to have fun in a safe way. And so there are lots of choices you can make and decisions uh, about how to enjoy yourself while you're on your vessel. Uh, and that's why we talk about it that way. Next slide, please. So uh, we here in Annapolis are lucky um, that we are uh, uh, located on the beautiful Chesapeake Bay. Uh, we have one of the largest protected bodies of water in the world to do our cruising and we can cruise up and down uh, the uh, uh, shores uh, of the uh, Eastern and Western shore of Virginia and Maryland or we can cruise along the coast um, uh, of the peninsula, which we call the Delmarva to go all the way around the Delaware, Maryland uh, peninsula. Next slide, please. Or we can go, uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, I think you skipped one, no? Oh. Anyway, uh, or you can go uh, offshore uh, and there should be a picture of me uh, rounding uh, Cape May, uh, headed to, um, I don't think it's the next one, but uh, it's okay. Oh yes, it's the next one, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yes, so this is a picture of me uh, rounding Cape May. The point, the point there, I apologize. The point for that last slide is, um, we try to have a very active uh, cruising schedule uh, throughout the year. And uh, that, that last slide was highlighting some of the destinations that we uh, put together. So during the cruising season, we tend to have uh, about three cruises a month and uh, both uh, around the Chesapeake and um, uh, long-term cruises as well. So um, we can also do offshore cruising. And this was a picture that I really, really loved. And you can see in the upper right-hand corner is a screenshot from my chart plotter um, as I rounded uh, Cape May uh, at five o'clock in the morning. And the, the picture shows you what I saw as we rounded Cape May. 
uh, headed out uh, into the open ocean, uh, headed to Boston, uh, cruising to Boston from uh, Annapolis. So uh, offshore cruising uh, is also something that we can do with our electronic passage making. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about charts and maps, which are fundamental to how we organize uh, a passage. Next slide, please. So first we talk about marine charts and you'll hear us talk mostly about charts. So if you see something that looks like this and you, you might tend to call it a map, it's, it's not a map, this is a, a marine chart. And uh, a lot of these come from uh, data provided by NOAA, uh, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. And it gives us uh, a great deal of detail uh, about uh, water depths, uh, um, uh, the aids to navigation are there. Uh, it does give us some references to what's on land, uh, and that's important also to help get your bearings. And so uh, we're going to make sure we refer to this as a marine chart. Uh, next slide, please. And then there's an electronic version of a marine chart. So the electronic version is replicating what you see on a paper chart. And uh, like Bruce said when we started, and I'll reinforce, you always want to make sure you know how to use a paper chart and that you have paper charts uh, on board because all of these electronic tools that I'll talk about can always um, uh, stop working. They can run out of power. Uh, sometimes there's too much glare and you can't see them. Uh, and so you always do want to have uh, paper charts uh, on board. But electronic charts uh, give you a great deal of flexibility uh, and they replicate uh, not only all of the data that you would have on a uh, paper chart, they give you even more data, which is what is so exciting uh, about them. Uh, next slide, please. And you can see that uh, on the right-hand side, that's a, um, uh, an electronic chart of the uh, my home port. So Annapolis uh, Harbor, uh, you see the Severn River there and Eastport and uh, the Bay Bridge. And on the left-hand side, you can compare that with a map. And so um, with a map, we're used to seeing things like uh, roads, road features, highways, uh, highway numbers, those kinds of navigational tools because they're helping us to navigate around in a car. But when we're navigating uh, in a boat, that becomes less important. And so you, don't, you can't see that as well. And what you do highlight, as you see on the right, are the elements that we need to pay attention to as a marine navigators, as we're navigating in our vessels, in our boats. Next slide, please. So when we talk about electronic charts, there are two types of charts, vector charts and raster charts. Uh, raster charts essentially is an electronic version of a paper chart. So when we looked at that very first paper chart, um, this is an electronic version of that chart. And um, one of the downsides of, so the nice thing about a, a, a raster-based chart is it's very familiar. So if you're used to looking at electronic charts, um, I'm sorry, if you're used to looking at paper charts, um, the uh, raster-based electronic charts are very easy uh, to understand. They're familiar and you know um, uh, the kind of data that you're looking for, you can zero in on that uh, pretty quickly. One of the problems is as you start um, uh, um, drilling down on a raster-based chart, it doesn't refresh. Um, and so the scale of the map is not going to change. And so as you get closer and closer to what you're drilling down on, you're gonna have less and less uh, data. And that makes it, uh, that's one of the downsides of a raster-based chart. On the other hand, you have a vector-based chart. Uh, and a vector-based chart is a graphical representation of the chart. And it comes from data. Uh, and that underlying data can be fed to the chart plotter. And you can get, as you drill down, you can get more and more data about that specific location. And you can keep drilling down and drilling down and it'll keep repopulating the map with new uh, information. You also have the ability with a vector-based chart um, for that data to be updated pretty rapidly. You can update your electronic charts, uh, your, um, your raster-based charts as well, but the data on a vector-based chart can be updated pretty rapidly. And so no matter, um, I was gonna say no matter, but 
you at some point you can still zoom in too far and there's no more detail level of data. But um, for the most part, as you keep drilling down or uh, uh, pulling back, the chart is going to be refreshed with new data and that's going to give you uh, a, a more detailed information about your surroundings. Uh, next slide, please. So if you look at um, uh, some of the 10A requirements, um, you'll, you'll see uh, requirements for ordinary 10A that focus on uh, charts. Uh, next slide, please. So these, this is the uh, older slide set. So if you could just jump ahead to, I think it's slide uh, 20 is the next um, um, agenda slide. No, it's quite a, quite a few slides forward. That right there. So, um, so with those electronic charts, now we want to talk about ATON, so aids to navigation. Uh, one of the things that is so powerful about these types of charts is as you start to plan, this is all critical information for you to pay attention to. Uh, next slide, please. And it's all reflected uh, on your charts. So the aids to navigation, uh, most of you are um, either familiar with these or beginning to get familiar with these. These are uh, put in place by the US Coast Guard and, and help to maintain, uh, uh, to be maintained um, by the auxiliary and other, um, uh, other units. Uh, they help to point out uh, a range of uh, elements as we are navigating. So uh, they help to point out the, uh, the, the channel. Uh, they mark the channels as we're coming into uh, bays and going into rivers and creeks. And um, uh, one of the key things to remember about atons, and there are a lot of things we can talk about and how they uh, help with navigation, but uh, one of the key uh, uh, mnemonics that we try to get people to remember initially is red, right, return. So as you're coming into a body of water uh, on your right hand side or on your starboard side, you should expect to see uh, red aids to navigation. And, and on your uh, port side, as, you, as you're coming in, you expect to see green aids to navigation. And that's one of the um, elements that helps to orient you as you're on the water. Uh, if you look at these atons, you'll also see that uh, they have uh, numbers and um, sometimes in, in colors and sometimes lights, uh, the numbers are also going to be reflected uh, on your charts. So all of these uh, atons will be on your charts, both paper and uh, electronic. And you can look at the uh, numbers uh, on the chart and look at in real life, the aton that you're looking at on the water with your binoculars or with your naked eye. And you can uh, help to, uh, uh, ensure that you're in the right place, you're where you think you are. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. Uh, there are several, several slides uh, beyond this. If you just keep going, I'll tell you when to stop. All this, this is it. So all this is important. I just want to uh, make sure we have enough time. I want to do some hands-on plotting. So uh, I, I'm skipping over some material that, um, we can talk about if we want to in Q and A. So chart plotters uh, are one of the places where these maps, and, sorry, these charts get uh, loaded. Um, they get loaded into a chart plotter. You can do this uh, on your computer. Uh, you can do it on uh, your mobile devices like iPhones and iPads. And, and of course you can do it uh, on board uh, your vessel. Next slide, please. So you have uh, handheld chart plotters, you have fixed chart plotters. Um, you can have chart plotters that are at the uh, binnacle and at the helm station uh, in a sailboat. Uh, you can have um, uh, chart plotters that are at the helm of a powerboat. And uh, one of the nice things about being able to do this on a mobile device or a handheld chart plotter is that you can do this uh, at home. You can plan all kinds of routes. And uh, then when you get to your vessel, you can uh, actually use those routes that you planned out uh, in advance. Next slide, please. So you can have an integrated interface. And so you can look at this as a little bit crowded. And so it has all kinds of data that you need to uh, plan and, uh, and undertake your passage. So you can um, uh, look at your speed. You can look at your, your bearing, your GPS coordinates, uh, the depth of the water, 
you see all the atons, the red and green atons marking the channel. Um, and um, this is actually my area here. So this is Annapolis as well. There's the Bay Bridge. Um, there's uh, the Magathy River um, and um, uh, the Severn River uh, right here in the middle. Next slide, please. In addition to an integrated interface, you can have separate devices. And this is on board Transcend where you can see all of that same uh, data is in individual devices. And this is a, um, a slightly older strategy to use with electronic passage making, but it's very, very effective. So you, you have a dedicated device that can be pulled out and changed if it uh, goes bad. Uh, and you know exactly where to look for uh, each of the um, uh, types of devices. So I have wind speed here, uh, uh, depth of the water, uh, and a range of other um, bits of information for us to use. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, GPS receivers and chart plotters, um, they're going to be relying very heavily on GPS, um, uh, global positioning uh, system, um, as it is trying to find out where you are. Uh, and it will also use the GPS to try to figure out where you're going. So one of the tools that some of these uh, electronic chart plotters will do for you, and I, I, I definitely recommend that you don't over rely on this, but they will actually uh, chart a course for you. Um, so you can put in, uh, use the GPS to figure out where you are and then put in uh, where you want to go. And you can also put in various settings about your vessel. So the depth that you require um, and so forth. And then it will plot uh, what it considers to be a safe course for you to get there. And, um, you know, that's an, a, a quick, uh, um, easy way to uh, chart a course to a particular destination, but it's very risky. Uh, and I would never, I, even if I charted it that way to try to get a sense of how long would it take to get to that location, I would never undertake a voyage using just that automatically plotted uh, course. I'm, I'm always going to want to look at it um, see where the routing is taking me, double checking that the routing is not um, uh, routing me through an area where the depth is too shallow uh, or over some kind of obstacle or through an area where I'm not supposed to be sailing. Uh, next slide, please. And I think we're gonna need to go forward several ones. Yep, so if you just quickly go um, all through these. Yep. You might want to just get out of this and yep, it's the next, uh, there we are, thank you. All right, so now um, uh, we've talked about the benefits of chart plotters um, and their ability to uh, navigate, uh, help you navigate a particular course uh, I now want to talk about plotting a course, and then we'll uh, hopefully get to uh, a little bit of hands-on here. So uh, next slide, please. So when you start to plot a course, there are a number of things that you're going to want to uh, keep in mind. Next slide, please. And again, part of it is where do you want to go? Uh, and one of the nice things, again, around the Chesapeake Bay are all kinds of places where you might want to go. And there are a number of um, resources to use. There's the Chesapeake Bay Guide. I'm sure in each uh, of your areas, you have some kind of a guidebook to your waters. You can see places to anchor. You can see um, uh, restaurants. You can find marinas. And so there are all kinds of interesting places uh, for you to go. Um, many of you have been planning your long cruises. Um, so if you're going to be on the water um, for uh, two weeks, uh, you really want to know what are some of the places you can go and what can you do in those places where you go? Next slide, please. So once you find out where you wanna go, you definitely wanna make sure you have a sense of the weather. And there are lots of electronic tools to give you a sense of uh, the weather. Uh, weather.com is one of those. There are a whole range of weather and radar apps, uh, again, that you can use at home as you start to plan out a particular uh, route and destination. Next slide, please. Uh, you have apps that will help you determine the tides and the currents. So not only do you want to be aware of the depth, um, and uh, the depth on charts is really is usually focused on um, uh, mean low water level. And so sometimes it might be a little uh, lower or a little higher, but it's going to tell you generally what the depth of the water is, where you're trying to uh, organize and navigate your uh, passage. 
Uh, but in addition to the depth, you wanna be aware of tides and currents because these can have a huge impact, particularly in a sailboat of how long um, it's going to take you to get from one place to another. And in some places the, the um, uh, current can be very, very strong and pushing against you and really make it uh, challenging to um, uh, uh, and, and somewhat dangerous to get to your destination. So you always wanna be aware of uh, tides and currents and we can come back and talk about that as well. Next slide, please. So uh, in addition to the chart plotters, you have tools that will allow you to actually book your slip electronically. This has changed passage making tremendously. So it used to be that you would have to plan uh, pretty far in advance and um, uh, make a booking, what's called a transient slip. It's like a, a parking place for your boat. Um, uh, and now you can actually use an app. You can go to the app, look at the marina that you're interested in going to, uh, put in the specifications of your vessel, uh, how much, uh, what's the depth of your vessel, how much do you draw, what's the length overall of your vessel, what's the beam, uh, what's your electrical requirements, and then you can ask the marina, do they have a slip that meets your needs? And if they do, you can book it right then. So if you're underway and you decide you want to uh, change your uh, uh, location for your next uh, stop, you can do that right online and you'll have a place to park your, your boat, uh, berth your boat. Uh, next slide, please. So if you look at a place like Harrington Harbor South, for example, um, this is a very popular destination on the Southern Bay, uh, mid to Southern Bay. And you can look at Harrington Harbor and you can say, well, what are the things that I could do there uh, if I uh, you know, make that a part of my destination? So um, I can book a transient slip, but I can use the swimming pool. I can use the restaurants. Um, I can book a, a land-based uh, uh, room if I want to. So using these kinds of electronic tools also can help enhance your, uh, your passage. Next slide, please. So um, you uh, can still look at your maps. So maps are helpful um, to give you a sense of if people were going to meet you somewhere, uh, how would they get there? Uh, next slide, please. But you wanna look at your chart. Um, and so this is a chart. Uh, and what I'd like to do now is uh, take control if I could and share my screen. Thank you for giving me that. And I just wanna share with you first, uh, Open Captain. So Open Captain is uh, an open source chart plotting tool. And uh, this is a tool that allows you, uh, let's see, can everybody see that? <laughs> I don't see any other videos. I'm assuming everybody can see that. We can just see uh, Open CPT Chart Plotter Navigation. That's it. That's it. So that's the website to go to download this open source chart plotting software. And uh, I'm about to show you that software now, and you'll get a sense of what it can do. And there certainly are uh, commercial software packages like Navionics is one that I use, um, uh, Garmin, uh, many others. But these tools, I'm going to make it put it on this screen here so I can see it a little bit better. All right, so this is um, what the uh, open CPN looks like. So this is running on my computer. It's just open, uh, open captain. And a couple of things that I'll show you quickly is if you see all these different magenta colored lines, those are different paper-based charts that you could uh, use as you were looking at the same view. And if you go down here to the bottom, you'll see uh, you can hover over, over, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, multiple charts that I'm using right here and you can hover over it and you could look up that particular chart if you wanted to, um, you know, look at, you know, grab the paper chart for that version or look in your chart book uh, for that particular uh, part of the map. So now you can drill down. Um, so you can click and, uh, you know, reorient and decide where do you want to look at. So I'm getting closer to uh, Annapolis. So this is a view that I've been showing you a lot today where you have this, the uh, Severn River um, uh, here. You've got the Bay Bridge, uh, the Magathy River, and the Patapsco River. 
So uh, this afternoon uh, and tomorrow, I have a plan to take a cruise uh, from Annapolis to Baltimore. Um, so this is the route that I'll be uh, planning to take. And so uh, let's just drill down a little bit more uh, into Annapolis Harbor and see how we get out of here and uh, plot a destination to get to ba uh, Baltimore. So I'm gonna keep drilling in, I'm just clicking and it's going into several charts to get me closer and closer to my destination. This, this will bring us in even farther. And you can see it's using these um, familiar paper charts, but with this particular system, what it does is it's replacing the um, uh, raster-based chart that's large scale with a smaller scale uh, chart as you as you drill down. So this is Annapolis. This is Back Creek. I'm going to go in one more time and show you. So this is where um, our vessel is birthed, uh, right here in Back Creek. Um, our clubhouse is located right here. So when we get ready to uh, take a, a voyage, we can start plotting from where the boat is located, which is right here. Uh, out the channel to get out of Back Creek. So this is the, the, the heading that I'll need to take when I'm on board to get to this channel uh, to exit out. I can look at um, what are some of the conditions. You know, my uh, our sailboat draws um, six and a half uh, feet. So we need to be particularly aware um, as we're going um, uh, out of a channel to make sure that we have enough space, enough depth under the boat to, uh, to get out safely. So now I can keep scrolling along here, going under the Bay Bridge. Oops, probably went too far. I can get into, into the, the channel here, going up past the Magathy River, going into the Patapsco River. Now I can navigate down the Patapsco River under the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And for those of you who know the Baltimore area, this gets exciting here because this is Fort McHenry. And now I can start to go into um, the Inner Harbor area. It's lots of marinas um, down here in this area and um, trying to figure out exactly where I want to uh, end up, let's say. So now I've got this uh, chart that's plotted. I can go back and make any changes that I need to, uh, if I need to uh, adjust uh, a waypoint, if I got outside of the track that I wanted to get on. And now I can, I can get a sense of how long that's going to take. Um, I can get a sense of um, uh, the you know, possible destinations for me to explore along the way. Um, or if the weather turns um, uh, turns bad, then I can think about uh, you know alternatives for me to uh, to step into if I need to. So I'd like to stop there and see if we have any questions. Well, thank you, Skipper Cockburn, for <clears throat> a really good presentation, really cool live demonstration of plotting your upcoming voyage. Um, there were a few questions I was able to answer mostly on um, atons uh, in the chat box, um, but something you're uh, with with all of the um, chart plotting technology. Um, so, what devices are you relying on? Right? Are you talking just a cell phone? Um, you know, how are you um, actually pulling up the programs? And then, could you talk a little bit about having um, backup sources? Right? I know we talked about having paper charts, but you know. Say you Absolutely. are relying on the cell phone <laughs> and that goes out and you know, um, what do you what do you recommend? So so the first part of the question is, um, how are you accessing these kinds of tools when you're on board? So what I'm showing you was a laptop. So that open source software is uh, running on a laptop. So a lot of people will down at the um, uh, navigation station, which you see on the left hand side of this picture, will have a laptop uh, on board. And you know it can be on, on your larger vessels, you know, we have um, an inverter on Transcend, for example, you can just plug your regular laptop in, uh, have it at the nav table and uh, have it, you can actually have it connected to your onboard GPS and so forth. So some people use it that way. Um, uh, what I tend to do is, uh, I'll use, I don't bring my laptops on board that much. Um, what I tend to do is to use those kinds of tools to 
plot various courses and explore things. And then when I find something that I, I know I, I'm going to want to use on board, I will do that in one of my commercial tools. Like I'll use my Navionics uh, on my iPad, for example, uh, where I can store lots of routes that I'm planning to use. And I'll bring the Navionics on board and actually put that, um, you know, to, as an, I have, I have onboard chart plotters as well, but I like to put that um, as a backup to the, to the chart plotters. I have a backup to the backup. And then of course, PJ, I have my paper charts. And so um, now that I've become so familiar with this route, I've been looking at it multiple times. If the phone goes out, it runs out of power or you know is corrupted for some reason and the onboard uh, chart plotter is corrupted for some reason, then I will you know immediately pull out the paper charts. But because I've been so familiar with it, I've been looking at this over and over and over again the paper charts are uh, are much more easier, much more familiar to me at that point. Well, thank you for that great advice. Um, we are at one o'clock, so I'm going to hand it back over to you, Bruce. Thank you very much, uh, Skipper. And I think of uh, when I was learning to uh, to navigate, the message that was drilled into my head was use all of the available sources you have because you can't rely on just a single source. That single source may be giving you misleading information. I remember when our ship was using GPS in the early days of GPS, at one point the GPS was